several years ago, a professor at Princeton named Gerard O'Neill conceived of the idea of putting large colonies in space, large artificial places where people could live and work. And what we did was to gather together a group of university people to look at the problem of how you would start this whole endeavor, of how you'd build the very first colony. This is Taurus, the concept that has evolved from the work of these teams of scientists and engineers. They believe the huge space colony could be built before the year 2000. The space colony has the ability to provide a facility in space where human beings can conduct fruitful industry. The uh, amount of sunlight that is present in every square mile of space is enormous, and that provides enormous energy. One of the things that one can do is to build very large solar power stations which collect sunlight and to use that power either at the colony or to transmit it to Earth in the form of a microwave beam where it is collected on Earth and put into the ordinary electrical power system. The materials for the, for the colony and for the uh, power station largely come from the moon. It is much cheaper to haul the materials from the lunar surface than it is to bring things up from the Earth because of the difference of gravities. And so it is the abundance of good material for building aluminum structures and glass structures in space that come from the moon that make the idea work. Constructed almost entirely from ore mined on the moon, the Taurus colony would become home for 10,000 people. They would live, work, and be protected within a vast wheel more than a mile in diameter. The Earth-like environment would even simulate our gravity as the wheel revolves once each minute. The other materials like food and water are maintained locally within the colony. The uh, initial supplies are brought up from Earth, and then eventually the colony becomes self-sustaining. We got the agricultural system designed so that we could actually feed 10,000 people in an area of just a little over 100 acres. This is very, very, very efficient. We did it by utilizing the sunlight that's available all the time in space, by optimizing the temperatures, by not having storms or things like that that damage crops, and we uh, increase the carbon dioxide levels a little bit so the plants grow a little faster. By playing all these tricks, we're able to generate this, this fairly efficient farm in our design. From dairy farms to manufacturing, the concept of living and working in space is a possibility with existing technology. That new space home, located a quarter of a million miles from Earth, would even have a far out address. There are places in space between the Earth and the Moon called the libration points. And these are places basically where the gravity from the moon and the gravity from the earth cancel each other out. And an object placed at that location remains there and doesn't drift off. They're called L4 and L5. There are two of them, one before the moon and one on the, the, on the, uh, on the trailing side of the moon. Space colonization. Beneficial occupancy of possibly the last and highest frontier, the space beyond Earth.